Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hidden details you didn't know about John Wick. I've never seen you like this. Like what? For this list, we'll be looking at details and little factoids you might have missed while watching the first three films of the John Wick series. Know something about John Wick we don't? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. A Basketball Cameo John Wick Chapter 3 – Parabellum While trying to get as much done as possible during his hour grace period before a bounty on his head becomes active, John Wick finds himself at the New York Public Library. He picks up a book of Russian fairy tales by Alexander Afanasyev some of which feature the Baba Yaga. Soon, he encounters Ernest, a very tall assassin looking to collect the bounty on Wick. I still have time. He's almost up. Who's gonna know the difference? You sure this is what you wanna do? 14 million, it's a lot of money. After a brief fight, Wick is able to dispatch him. Ernest is played by NBA big man Boban Marjanovic who's also appeared in a few other films, TV shows, and commercials. Perhaps he would have been more successful against Wick if they played some 1v1 on the court. Number 9. Iron Chef – John Wick Chapter 3 – Parabellum in order to punish John Wick for breaking the rules at the Continental, an adjudicator seeks out Zero. Faced with the prospect of taking out Wick, Zero happily agrees to be of service. I'm interested. Very. It's not by coincidence that when the adjudicator approaches him, Zero is working as a sushi chef. The character is played by actor Mark Dacascos. How can I help you? Dacascos portrayed the chairman in the cooking show Iron Chef America. It's a neat little call-out to the classic show, and now we're wondering how things would have played out if Zero and Wick battled it out in the kitchen instead. Blowfish. Very fatal. No slight. Number 8. A Bold Back Tattoo – John Wick once Vigo Tarasov realizes that John Wick will be coming for revenge, he tries a diplomatic approach. He calls Wick up and asks if they can talk it out. Let us not resort to our baser instincts and handle this like civilized men to move on. When that doesn't work, he resorts to sending a crew to take out Wick. John readies himself for an influx of enemies by first taking a shower. Here, we see a tattoo across his back with the Latin phrase, Fortis Fortuna Aduat. Without getting into a whole etymology course, it roughly translates to fortune favors the bold or fortune will help those who are strong. Given the amount of damage someone like John Wick can do, fortune is definitely by his side. You uh, working again? No, I just sorting some stuff out. Oh, well. I'll leave you be then. Number 7. A Dangerous Drink – John Wick Following an attack in his own home, John Wick wakes to find his car stolen by his assailants. Where'd you get that car? Wick sets out to find answers and pays mechanic shop owner Aurelio a visit. There, he learns Yosef Tarasov is the person responsible for the automotive theft. Following their conversation, Wick simply asks Aurelio to provide him with a new car. So what are you going to do? I need a ride. However, at the beginning of their talk, Aurelio pours Wick a drink. Looking closely at the bottle, its label reads Peligroso. Is it here? It was. Translated from Spanish, it can mean dangerous. It's a nice little bit of foreshadowing of who John Wick is. Number 6. Sharon, The John Wick Franchise 
When John Wick pulls up to the Continental Hotel, he's met by Sharon at the front desk. There, Wick gives him a gold coin. And we later see Wick paying for services provided by others with more coins. In fact, when Wick digs up his weapons cache in his basement, he has several guns and a bunch of coins. What's interesting to note here is that Sharon is a character in ancient Greek mythology who would shepherd souls across the rivers Styx and Acheron, and payment would be done with gold coins. Throughout the series, Wick has sent many souls to the underworld, all paid for in gold. Mr. Wick, do enjoy your party. Number 5. Guns. Lots of guns. John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum When Winston refuses to step down as manager of the New York Continental Hotel, John Wick is sent to kill him. And you're not stepping down. No. I don't think I am. So it's war. You're going to war with the high table. Skirmish. As the two men come face to face and exchange words, Wick decides he will not kill Winston. Since they refuse to comply, the adjudicator has the status of the Continental changed to one that is deconsecrated, meaning that the hotel is no longer neutral. Business may now be conducted on Continental grounds. Since you are refusing to step down and you are refusing a direct order, your lives are now forfeit. Agents of the High Table will soon arrive to remove their souls. In order to fight them off, Wick is going to need guns. Lots of guns. Our service is still off limits to me. Under the circumstances, your privileges are reinstated immediately. What do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. This line, while cool, is a direct quote from Neo in The Matrix, when he and Trinity go to rescue Morpheus, consequently played by Lawrence Fishburne, who also appears in the John Wick franchise. Number 4. Baba Yaga – John Wick There's only one man who can kill the boogeyman, and that's John Wick. This fact is especially troubling if you just ended Wick's puppy's life and stole his car. I heard you struck my son. Yes, sir, I did. Yeah, may I ask why? Yeah, well, because he stole John Wick's car, sir, and uh, killed his dog. Oh. Antagonist of the film, Vigo Tarasov, comes to learn that's exactly what his son Yosef has done. Vigo reveals that Wick was known as Baba Yaga. I called him Baba Yaga. The boogeyman? Well, John wasn't exactly the boogeyman. He was the one you sent to kill the boogeyman. In Slavic folklore, Baba Yaga is generally depicted as an elderly woman, but one who can punish those who do wrong by others. Vigo knows what Wick is capable of, despite Yosef's claims of being able to set things right. Baba Yaga also collects souls, and Wick is coming to do just that. You will do nothing because you can do nothing. Number 3. Watch Placement – John Wick John Wick is a bit of a mystery. We don't know too much about his background. We know he's a prolific assassin, the aforementioned Baba Yaga. Who do you wish to die as? The Baba Yaga? The last thing many men ever see? Or as a man who loved and was loved by his wife? We also know that he's someone you definitely do not want to upset, or he might just be the last person you ever see. While more of his backstory is revealed in a line of comics from Dynamite and sequel movies, a bit of a clue to his tactical background is given to the audience during the first film. So start with this, because the card doesn't count. If you pay close attention to his wrist, you'll notice he's wearing a watch, but it's facing downwards. This is a tactic commonly used by combat soldiers to prevent light reflecting off the dial and giving away one's position. Hello, John. I heard about your wife. I'm sorry, my condolences. Number 2. Last Words The John Wick Franchise 
It should come as no surprise that John Wick overcomes his enemies by movie's end. What may be surprising, however, are similar parting words offered to John once someone has met their end. After Vigo Tarasov is defeated, he says to John that he'll be seeing him soon. Be seeing you, Dom. Yeah. Be seeing you. Similarly, after John takes down Ares, Santino D'Antonio's security enforcer, she signs that she'll see him soon as well. Sure. When Wick overcomes Zero, he says they'll catch up. You just gotta catch my breath. I'll catch up to you, John. No, you won't. What differs are John's responses in each situation. Over the course of the series, it seems John's position changes on whether or not he'll encounter these foes again. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. A Weak Timeline the John Wick franchise. No time to dilly dally, Mr. Wick! Time is relative. Even though years go by between film releases of each installment of the John Wick franchise, the same can't be said for the passage of time in terms of the actual story. If it seems like it was just yesterday that Wick was out getting revenge for what was done to his dog, you'd be right. The first three films span about a week. You've heard the stories about him, of course. Killed scores of men this past week alone because of- A dog. A car. It's actually crazy to think that an individual such as John Wick has been able to do all the things he's done, not to mention all the places he's traveled in such a short amount of time. If it were us, we would have passed out a long time ago. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.